Hey guys, in today's lecture we're going to be talking about slope stability. I'm going to be giving in a civil engineer and a geotechnical engineer's guide to understanding slope stability. And in this lesson I'm going to speak about three different things. So number one is I'm going to be giving a very quick introduction into what is slope stability. How do we consider it? Like how does it affect the work that we do as civil engineers and geotechnical engineers. So it'll be a very quick intro. Then I'm going to show you some free uh, open source web software that you can use to help you calculate and solve slope stability problems. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to give a deep dive into the theory of slope stability, giving you the first principles understanding and helping you to understand the hand calculations as well. So all of this will be quite useful if you're a geotechnical engineer working on projects or if you're a student who's also working on your university assignments and you're trying to understand about slope stability. So without further ado, what actually is slope stability? So um, Slope stability can be thought of as being like landslides and things like this as well. It affects lots of different places around the world um, where you have any sort of sloping terrain. And what happens is um, you have this failure uh, wedge. So you'll see something like this perhaps um, where you've seen land sort of fall away from the edge of um, the sort of edge of the ground at the, at the top or the crest of the slope. And then what you have in reality is you have this failure envelope where it's like a surface along which all the ground has failed and fallen away from. So what we do as geotechnical engineers is we look at lots of different planes through this slope. And one of these planes will be like the critical, uh, the critical face. Um, and that's the, the, typically it's the ground which has the sort of lowest factor of safety when you're looking at the sort of stability of it. So what you do is you take lots and lots of uh, thin uh, wedges through this, um, through this surface of the slope. And one of them you'll find will have the lowest factor of safety. And then that's the overall factor of safety of this slope. It can be a bit more complicated than this when you have like blocky ground or you have rock, but with soft soils, um, things like clay, uh, then you'll typically see this kind of failure pattern where it's all along one single edge that's like quite clearly defined. Um, but what we can do as geotechnical engineers is we can do this by hand or we can use software. So here what I'm going to show you is some free open source software that you can use to run these calculations. So if you go to www.calcforge.com, you'll see here we have this uh, module for slope stability analysis. So it's completely free and open source. If you go down, you can see the actual link to the source code. Um, so it's a Python Python. Um, project this is. So you can click that to go to the GitHub and see the code. But you can actually also use this user interface that we've developed where you can basically um, enter your, your profile for your slope and it will generate that envelope or that failure surface for you and tell you the factor of safety of it. So you'll see here on the left is like a visual representation. So it's showing the groundwater level, the different layers of geology. Um, and the overall like height and dimensions of the slope. On the right is where we can actually configure this. So we can change things like the slope height, the length, the water depth. We can also add different or edit different loads. So you'll see here, we've not actually applied any loads here, but we can add a distributed load or a point load and also edit the geology. So I'm just gonna configure this a bit differently. So let's say I'm gonna change this slope height to five. So maybe just have a think, what do you think will happen to this factor of safety if I'm increasing the slope height? So if I hit analyze, what you're gonna find is basically this factor of safety has now reduced. So um, we are more likely for a failure to happen. And in this case, uh, any factor of safety which is under one is basically uh, a failure of some sort. So, so this is saying the slope is now unstable. We can click to result summary and it will basically confirm that like slope is unstable. Here's the critical factor of safety. And what you can also do is click this full calculation button. And what this will do is it will generate a sort of preview of all of the slip surfaces, which this analysis has considered. So it's going to run like 
hundred or thousand different uh, analysis and it will show you here um, the factor of safety of each one of those which it's analyzed. So you'll see, see here there's a scale, red being closer to zero, three being like on the higher end. You can see here the distribution of how that sort of slope uh, is behaving. You'll see a lot of the critical factor of safety uh, count results are all sort of in that same area along here. And one of the key parts of this calculation is that the longer the length of this uh, envelope that's considered, the more length you have, and therefore you have the sort of like more frictional force or the more stability of the slope itself. So you'll see here they tend to be like shorter, um, but not one, not, not there's not any here which are actually sort of, um, which look to be on this like higher end, which are actually within the slope, not like completing the whole slope itself. You'll see here the worst case seems to be more starting around where the slope begins and then right at the bottom. So this is like a pattern that you can you, you can see in this slope, but it could be different, right? It could depend on what type of, um, basically what the geology is. You could have a very thin band of like sand in there. So maybe you could just have a look at what sort of effect that would have. So you can click here like edit geology and I can add in um, a custom a custom material. So maybe what I could, I could do is I could basically copy all the properties uh, of this or sort of check they're all roughly the same. Um, so transfer these down and then I could also make this like let's say two meters of um, two meters of like a softer material in here so let me make this like maybe 20 and make this like for the cohesion um, and then reanalyze this and let's see how that factor of safety changes as well so you'll see here now it's yeah it's much worse so and you'll see this critical factor of safety is now actually passing it's not going all the way to the bottom it's passing and sort of failing within this softer layer we've created so very interesting it's found that we can also add surcharge like a distributed load or a point load so i can add like at the crest i could add like a 10 kilonewton point load which is like two meters away from the edge and click analyze again and then you'll see here i've added this 10 kilonewton load and yeah it's made the factor of safety worse so what we can do with the software is we can use this to validate or analyze slope stability problems but it's key that we use this in the right situations and the right circumstances so i'm going to talk that about that a bit more in the theory section which we're moving on to now but basically this calculator is quite good for soft ground it uses the, a method called the bishops method which yeah is 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 more suited towards soft ground rather than something like blocky rock um so yeah that's it let's move on to the theory section now so what is slope stability Slope failure, otherwise known as a landslide or rockfall, is a phenomenon where the ground in a non-equilibrium state is displaced under the action of gravity. The earth is displaced until it reaches a new equilibrium condition. Slopes can fail in a variety of different ways, depending on the slope geology profile and if there are any fractures within the earth. However, when failure does occur, it's sudden, typically without many warning signs. If a slope is susceptible, then failure usually occurs after a period of heavy rain, which, which results in changes to the groundwater table. There are a wide range of slope failure mechanisms here. We cover some of the most common failure types. Plane failure commonly occurs when discontinuities through the slope intersect to form a planar surface along which the block is free to move, which failure occurs when two discontinuities intersect whose lines of intersection are approximately perpendicular to the strike of the slope and dip towards the plane of the slope. Circular failure follows a similar principle to wedge failure. Toppling failure occurs when columns of rock formed by deep discontinuities rotate about a fixed point at or near the base of the slope, followed by slip between the layers. Rotational slips are the most common form of slope failure and follow a circular arc through the soil. Translational slips are also common, which are typically found when the top soil layer is underlain by a soil of a different strength. Further details on rotational slips will be covered in a later video. Let's now take a look at how we're calculating slope stability. We use seven calculation stages to determine a slope stability factor of safety. First, we need to define the 2D geometry, considering things like slope height and length. 
Next, we define a failure surface, which we assume the slope is failing along. We split the model into a number of different slices. The greater the number of slices, the more accurate the calculation will be. We calculate the weight of each size slice and then calculate the resisting force on each slice. Then we calculate the destabilizing force. And finally, we calculate the factor of safety between resistance and the destabilizing forces. We repeat this process for all possible failure surfaces. Let's look at the stages one to three. After defining the 2D geometry and water table level, we assume a circular, circular failure surface through the slope. Now we can define the center of this failure slope and radius of an, an arbitrary location. We then divide the slope within the bounds of the failure surface into a number of slices. The more, the better. After we've split the slope into a number of slices, we can consider these slices individually. Each slice follows the slope at an angle alpha. Each slice has a normal weight force and a water pressure. There is also shear resistance acting on the slope base, T, and vertical shear resistance between each slice, V. This calcula calculation here uses Fellenius approach, which assumes the inner slice force and resolves to zero for each slice. Please note this is a simplification and can lead to errors in some cases. The weight of each slice is calculated using the density and area of the slice. Next, we calculate the resisting forces on each slice. The calculation uses the more Coulomb failure criterion to calculate the shear resistance of each slice. This equation uses cohesion, normal force N and friction angle. The normal force N is then calculated for each slice, considering the weight, angle, pore, pressure, pore water pressure, and arc length of the slice base. The corresponding friction force is calculated using the effective normal stress and the friction angle. The cohesion resistance force is calculated using the cohesion and slice length. The overall resistance is calculated as the sum of the friction and the cohesion resistance. The destabilizing forces on each slice are calculated using the weight of each slice and the angle of the slice base from horizontal. The factor of safety of the slope is the ratio between the sum of the resisting and the sum of the destabilizing forces acting on all slices. Calculation stages 1 to 7 should then be repeated for all possible failure surfaces of the slope, with the worst case factor of safety then adopted.